Hello, good people. Ibra here with Hurricane Axe. And something just showed up on my doorstep. It's a big box. In fact, it is my very first curved gaming monitor. And I'm actually really excited about it because I haven't experienced curved gaming in a really, really long time. I do remember seeing a few monitors at show floors like CES and Computex, but looks like, uh, you know, that's, looks like I'm not gonna go anywhere anytime soon. But before I even touch that box, I gotta take care of something very important. Now that we're living in this, you know, crazy uh, situation worldwide. And that is disinfecting the box. I really wished if I invested in Lysol a while back, but uh, I guess it's too late. In fact, these things are very rare to find. Uh, well, at least where I live. So let me wipe this down. God, I can't believe I'm doing this right now, but better to be safe than sorry. You know, have you ever realized that this is something that you'd end up doing in 2020? Wiping down boxes like, ugh. Okay, that is, very gross. This is the AOC CU34G2X 34 inch curved gaming monitor. Of course, there's that alphabet soup that I'll never remember. But let's unbox this thing and uh, set this up. Three weeks later. All right, so I need to be transparent here for a sec. I've never really been a fan of curved ultra wide monitors because as a creator, I value vertical real estate or taller monitors that give you more vertical screen real estate. Uh, and of course, something that's more color accurate because that's what, that's what matters as a creator uh, when I'm producing videos or when I'm editing videos for you guys. So I've never really even thought about switching or at least making or trying to switch uh, to an ultra wide monitor, uh, but here I am, I spent a good amount of time with the curved gaming monitor from AOC uh, to see what the experience is like. But I also wanna set the stage for you guys as to what I've been using for the past couple of years. And that's this, the BenQ PD3200U. This has been my primary display since I reviewed it more than two years ago. It was a dream monitor for me because it's 4K and the display spans across 32 inches. It's a true 10-bit panel that's factory calibrated with excellent color accuracy. And I have no plans to replace this monitor just yet. But as I slowly started thinking about it, I realized that for people who are upgrading from a 24-inch 1080p display or a 27-inch 1440p display, the upgrade to a 34-inch ultra-wide monitor kind of makes sense because there's a good use case scenario for getting that extra horizontal screen real estate. Now, I've spent, like I said earlier, a good amount of time playing around with this thing, so um, let me walk you through my experience uh, using this. Okay, so this AOC CU34G2X is one of the best-selling curved gaming monitors on the market right now, according to Amazon. It also goes to show how far the larger format curved monitor market has come in terms of both pricing and screen quality. Why? Well, you're getting a 34-inch display with a 21 by 9 aspect ratio that's curved, uh, with a resolution of 3440 by 1440. It's also a VA panel with a refresh rate of 144 Hertz and a one millisecond claimed response time. It's also FreeSync Premium certified, so it's great for AMD users who want LFC or low frame rate compensation. Also, it's G-Sync compatible through DisplayPort Adaptive Sync protocol. Then there's AOC's new three-year dead pixel warranty that also covers accidental damage in the first year. And the price for all of this $450. Now, unfortunately, at the time of recording this video, a lot of the retailers are uh, marking up their prices or they've jacked up the prices on this monitor, which is kind of unfortunate. Uh, but if you can find it for $450, that is awesome. Now, just to quickly go over the physical aspects of this monitor, I'm actually really surprised by the build quality uh, that you're getting for the price. The stand is nice and rigid. I mean, this really did surprise me by a huge margin. Uh, this monitor also is VESA compatible, so if you're looking into mounting this on a third-party monitor arm, you can certainly do so. The I.O. is also very respectable. You're getting two DisplayPort 1.4, two HDMI, and a couple more uh, USB 3 ports, which is nice. And finally, there are a lot of color profiles built into the OSD that you can play around with. I prefer setting it to the standard mode as it was the most pleasing to my eyes. I'm gonna kick things off with my gaming experience using this monitor because given that it has a gaming brand on it, um, it naturally makes sense that it is targeted towards the gaming market. Uh, and I gotta say, I absolutely loved it. The 144 Hertz refresh rate along with that one millisecond response time, it was absolutely amazing. And I think the first thing that comes to my mind 
is that wider field of view because it can help expand horizontal awareness in FPS titles. There's also more horizontal viewing in racing games and strategy games can benefit from this as well. However, not all games support 21 by 9 format natively. Unfortunately, a lot of the games that I play don't have native support for this aspect ratio, like Need for Speed Payback, Need for Speed Heat. These are some of the titles that I'm really invested in, and unfortunately, it is just does not work. That vertical crop really ruins the whole gaming experience. Now, while a lot of the games that I play are older, don't expect that this is just an issue with older titles because newer games also suffer from this compatibility issue. Now, of course, there are workarounds to this. You can simply go into the config files, change a few things to make it work on your ultra wide monitor, but that does involve a lot of researching and it's just not a quick and easy step uh, to make it work on a 21 by nine display. Now, I will leave a link to the site called wsgf.org. It's a fantastic forum where it walks you through uh, the best optimal uh, settings to take advantage of your 21 by nine ultra wide monitor. I'll leave a link down below. Highly recommend checking that out. Unfortunately, some games can't be fixed either. Like Overwatch and some other titles apply a vertical crop. Some have said that this could be due to uh, giving anyone a competitive advantage, but it's still just darn annoying. I'd highly recommend that you research the games that you wanna play uh, and just not assume that it's just gonna work automatically on a 21 by nine display because when they work, they look amazing. It is an absolutely amazing experience, but when they don't, uh, you almost feel like, you know, all that money that you've invested in just, just got wasted. The next factor that I want to talk about is the curve on the monitor because it takes your immersion to a whole new level. Uh, if you're playing racing games or flight simulations or FPS titles, that curve, it sort of gives you this wraparound feel. It's difficult to describe it in words. You really have to experience it in person. Uh, I think another way of putting it is that it sort of tightens up your field of view, but you're still not losing uh, your sight or your peripheral vision. Everything is still in your peripheral vision. I think that's the best way to put it, if that made any sense. Um, and while this is a 1500R curved display, I didn't really find it too aggressive. It was just perfect. Like I said, I had a blast, but unfortunately that curve comes at a disadvantage when it comes to productivity. Because I spend the majority of my day creating content, and if I'm working on a thumbnail in Photoshop, my lines look warped. The composition just looks totally off, so I can't really make the call as to what it's gonna look like when someone views it on a smartphone display that's, for the most part, flat. So if my lines are straight on a curved monitor, or if I make it straight on a curved monitor, it may look warped on some other display that's flat. Again, it just throws me off, it throws my composition, it just, Again, I, I did not like having that warped image as I'm working in Photoshop or even in DaVinci Resolve. The other thing that bothered me was the size. The AOC curved monitor is slightly wider compared to the BenQ. You're getting roughly three inches more with the ultra wide, which is a bonus. On the other hand, the height favors the BenQ monitor because it has a 16 by nine aspect ratio and it requires to keep up with that spec. Now keep in mind that I did include the bezels as well, just to keep it simple. And to be honest with you, this 34 inch ultra wide monitor looked smaller to me compared to my 32 inch BenQ monitor. And I think that has to do with the height of the monitor rather than the width, because with the 4K BenQ monitor, you're getting more vertical pixels than the 34 inch ultra wide. So you get more vertical screen real estate when you're working with different applications. I'll give you a perfect example. People generally think that when you're using an editing software, the ultra wide aspect ratio gives you a broader perspective of your timeline. But I edit videos in chunks, meaning I zoom into the timeline and then edit 10 to 15 seconds of the video, perfect the cuts, make sure that the transitions are smooth, and then move on to the next portion. So the ultra wide didn't really make a huge difference to my workflow. However, what did bother me the most was the program monitor was significantly smaller compared to my BenQ monitor. There was just so much wasted space around that. Now keep in mind, this is a layout that I like to work with. Yours may be completely different. And if I switch over to the 32 inch BenQ monitor, you can clearly see that I can take advantage of all of that extra vertical screen real estate to make it bigger. And I can have a really nice view of the timeline as well. It's just perfect. Now, if I were to compare this 34 inch ultra wide to a 27 inch 1440p display, the ultra wide is the clear winner because you obviously get more space to work around horizontally. I think by now you have a clear idea that I've been spoiled by higher resolution displays. The next bit is watching videos on YouTube, Netflix, Amazon Prime, and other platforms. 
because most content being produced these days uh, come in a 16 by 9 format that can take advantage of every possible screen real estate. So on the BenQ monitor, when you hit that full screen button, boom, the whole thing fills up without any black bars. It's a pleasing experience overall. Switching over to the ultra wide, and you will immediately start to notice vertical black bars, which might not be a deal breaker for a lot of ultra wide users, but I just can't deal with that. However, when you find content being shot in that ultra wide aspect ratio, it's an amazing experience. On the positive side, multitasking typically favors the ultra wide because Windows management is efficient. So if you prefer having two different apps in split screen mode, you'll benefit from the extra field of view, meaning you can see more things within each window. I think this would be a great upgrade for those coming from a 27 inch 1440p display because you are gaining more horizontal pixels without sacrificing vertical pixels. There are some tools like Fancy Zone's Windows Manager that makes the non-gaming experience on these ultra-wide monitors so much more usable. Shout out to A Doug for pointing that out on Twitter. It's a super efficient way to snap multiple windows in different layouts. I'll leave a link down below. It's truly amazing. But here's the thing. I don't see myself getting into that situation because when I'm right in front of a display editing a video or writing out a script or researching a topic for a video, I'm more focused on the center part of the display rather than the sides. I typically position my browser tabs at the center instead of going full screen. Yes, I'm that guy. Also, when I'm making thumbnails using Photoshop, the content is right at the center, and I like to sort of frame things right in that area because it just helps me stay in focus and be more productive. I like to get things done step by step. I'm by no means a multitasking guru, and for the type of work that I do, I just prefer having a single window right around the center, and I'll just be completely fine with that. Now, I'm also aware that a lot of ultra wide users love having two, three, four windows at the same time, which fits their workflow and that's totally fine too. Now, as I mentioned earlier, I was skeptical about trying out a curved ultra wide gaming monitor, but I think the biggest takeaway after spending time, a good amount of time using this thing is that uh, it really gives you an immersive experience when you're gaming on it. The wilder field of view, when you try to play games that properly support that aspect ratio, it's just a fantastic experience. But um, would I switch to it permanently? Absolutely not, because I just cannot sacrifice that vertical screen real estate uh, just because, you know, 4K, it's just perfect for my needs. And uh, I just, yeah, I mean, this would, this would be a perfect complimentary monitor to my 32 inch, but I wouldn't switch to this as my primary display. With that being said, this AOC monitor strikes a good balance between performance and affordability, because for $450, the specs that you get, honestly, it is just a steal in my opinion. And if you're someone who is coming from a non 4K display or a large format display, say for instance, a 24 inch 1080p monitor or a 27 inch 1440 monitor, you should probably consider trying out a 34 inch ultra wide because you're really not losing a lot uh, in terms of size and most importantly, screen resolution. On that note, Thank you so much for watching. I hope you were able to take away something from this video. I'll be hanging out in the comments down below. I'm really curious to hear your thoughts, your stories, your experiences using ultra wide displays. Uh, so yeah, stay safe guys, spend responsibly, and I'll talk to you guys in the next one.